Good evening, everybody. It is Tuesday night, time for Local Live. It's just three minutes past six o'clock. You're tuned in to 91.7 FM WMSE Milwaukee. And uh, it's time for Local Live. My name is Aaron and Cal. Good evening. How's it going? Good. Good. Enjoying this last day of summer. Me too. It's it's always nice when you get a little bit of a, a warm uh, warm spell right before winter kicks in. I can't complain. I was no. up in Monaco over the weekend and there was like a 30 degree temperature swing from there to here. So. Oh boy. Fun. Yeah, I know they're getting snow up in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> oh geez. Okay. So yeah, we're not quite there yet. So um, while you're outside on your porch or in your garage hanging out, we've got a, a treat and an awesome guest in store for you tonight for Local Live. The sweet sounds of Jeff Mitchell and uh we haven't had Jeff on the show since he played with Dry House Ruins in uh, March of 2013. And uh, I have to mention once again, if you see their name listed on a bill, you should definitely check them out. They're amazing. And uh, Jeff's got a bunch of different projects that he's been involved in over the years. And some of them I just kind of discovered in researching for this show. But uh, a lot of different stuff. Tonight's show is going to be completely different from... Uh, most of his other projects, I think, and if you've had the privilege of seeing him play solo, you know that uh, just by himself, he's an amazing guitar player, a songwriter, and uh, if you aren't familiar, you're in for a treat tonight. Yeah, and um, I primarily got introduced to Jeff through, you know, the magic of Field Report in its mm-hmm. infancy back when it was Conrad Plymouth, and also, of course, Dry House Runes, but, you know, seeing Jeff play solo, it's just a totally different thing. He's got this natural ease about him that's really just nice and really magnetic. Mm-hmm. Um, I think his storytelling um, capabilities is tremendous. I really love him pushing boundaries with a little edginess. He's got like a vocal effect mic that he uses. It mixes up this like dusty Americana tinge sound that he's got. And although this might not make sense to a lot of people <laughs> upon listen, um, I, he just reminds me of a, like a mix of Amy Mann meets Richard Buckner with like a little 60s psychedelia thrown in there. Maybe throw in a little Neil, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's all that. just this tapestry of awesomeness that's really unique. Yeah, um, he's got a new EP coming sometime this fall, which is actually a collaboration with Charlie Parr and... Uh, mixed and mastered by Tom Herbers, and uh, it features songs that Jeff wrote along with uh, contributions from Trevor Grimm and Ben Weaver, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that and uh, more stuff coming up after he plays a set for us. That's right, and uh, we'll talk about his release show as well, coming up for that Greyhound EP. But first, let's thank those who make Local Live on WMSC possible each and every week. We'll be right back with music from Jeff Mitchell. WMSC's Local Live is supported by Club Garibaldi. Located at 2501 South Superior Street in Bayview. Open seven days a week, Club Garibaldi serves burgers, hot wings, and more. And features live music weekly. For more information and Club Garibaldi's live music events, visit clubgaribaldi.com. And thanks as always to Club Garibaldi for supporting WMSC's Local Live. And now, live from the Bob and Jeannie Freeman Live Performance Studios, we bring you the music of Jeff Mitchell. It's been a year since last we met. We may never meet again. I have struggled to forget. But the struggle was in vain For her voice had sung the breeze And her spirit comes and well In the midnight on the sea Her bright smile haunts me still in the mid 
midnight on the seas. Her bright smile haunts me still. I have sailed the alien skies. I have trod the desert path. I have seen the stormy rise like a giant in red. Every danger I have known at a reckless life can fill. Bright smiles haunts me still, though her presence is now flown. Her bright smiles haunts me still. At the first sweet dawn of light as I gaze upon the deep her form still greets my sight as the stars their vigor keep when I close my aching eyes sweet dreams my memories fill and from sleep when I rise her bright smiles haunts me still and from sleep when I rise, her bright smiles haunts me still.
and I could see. Mercy on the hill, I could see. I got a long way to go still. Days we all want to go to heaven, but no one's willing to die. Always thought we'd wind up together, never in the right place at the right time. My father's face, headlines I'll have some. I'll be going on my way I can see mercy on the hill. I can see got a long way to go still. Can I switch guitars quick here? That was a song uh, that was written by Ben Weaver. This next one was written by the late Trevor Graham.
All right, Milwaukee Film Fest coming up really, really quick. But back to local live here, WMSC. Jeff Mitchell is here in the studio. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, it's been been a second. I feel like when Cal said 2013 for Dry House Ruins, that just seems is ages that real? ago. Yeah, it doesn't feel real. Oh, well, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, that's a long time ago. Yeah, and and you guys haven't been super, super active lately. Um, have you been focusing more on your solo stuff? Uh, a lot, but actually uh, Jim Marshall and I just played a set uh, this weekend at uh, Acme's party down there. Uh, so it was just a two-piece, and I got to get out synthesizers and get all, <laughs> get all droney and weird down there. So. The fifth anniversary party? Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. I was sad to miss that. Always fun. Yeah, as always. Um, so we want to just kind of dig back into the past a little bit. Um, if you can tell us a little bit about kind of your upbringing in Minnesota, right? Yep. And then just kind of the path that that brought you eventually to Milwaukee. Sure, yeah. Um, I was born in Stuartville, Minnesota, which is a town of, it was like, I think 5,800 when I lived there and, um, high school class of like 107, I think something like that. So a little town, um, and, uh, you know, mix of farms and then kind of a bedroom community to Rochester, the metropolis of Rochester Okay, there. And, and, uh, so yeah, um, uh, grew up there in Southeast Minnesota and, and, uh, playing in garage bands and, and, uh, just with friends, you know, that's, that's kind of what it's always been for me, mm-hmm. um, is it's a, it's a great way to connect with people. And it's like, I want to spend time with the people that I'm making music with. And, and, um, and, uh, so anyway, I, I went there and then moved to Menominee to go to school and gotten some, you know, more bands and started playing. That was actually where I started playing stuff by myself. But besides being in rock and roll bands, um, and got it started getting into noise there too, um, some of the like more abstract stuff. So it was all kind of growing at the same time. Uh, but you know, grew up on like my dad and grandfather's country music hmm. uh, collection, and I still I go. My dad passed away some years ago, but I still go back to my mom's house and down under. Um, there's a bar in the basement and down underneath there there's still a stash of vinyl and so once in a while I'll grab grab a couple and drag them back home you know like Ernest Hub and things like that you mm-hmm. know? and uh, so I'll dip back into all that stuff but uh, I lived in Iowa moved down to Decorah, Iowa I was down there for a number of years living in a little cabin um, hmm. living a super more rural lifestyle um, no running water, like outhouse kind of situation and working, like worked on a carpentry crew. Some worked at the, uh, Westerheim Norwegian American museum down there as a exhibits tech there. And, and, uh, just met a ton of cool people. There's a lot of, um, really interesting folks there. Like had friends that were blacksmiths and lots of farmers, you know, a good friend who was a goat farmer and <laughs> just all these folks doing all these interesting jobs and, and, uh, lived there. And then ended up, my wife, Ann and I moved out to New Hampshire and lived out there for a while. And like, wow. and I thought that like, so I'd gotten used to Iowa communication where, like people don't talk and then I went out to New Hampshire and like people really don't talk and like got comfortable with that too and like just got more a little more comfortable with silence and like lived out in the you wouldn't know it by the way I go on and on but uh, <laughs> but like lived out in the um like the sort of the foothills of the White Mountains the Ospie Mountains out there okay and then ended up coming back here to be close to my family when my dad was ill and uh, so we landed in Janesville for a little bit and then oh. came up here and got like into the Milwaukee music scene, like really, um, which is a super welcoming place. Like I never felt extraneous here, you know, it just it was able to find a home here and a lot of really wonderful people to interact with right away. And um, 
you know, it's been fun. It's, you know, well, that's good that we've got that <laughs> reputation around here. The, you do uh, with me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, were you, were you kind of playing out like by yourself in all these different places or did you just kind of let the music go for a while? Well, I, I mean, it, it always kind of comes and goes. I've always been the yeah. kind of person, like I've had jobs <clears throat> and then I've not had jobs and, and if, you know, there's been times where I've just toured, um, mm. and didn't like my first tour that I did straight out of college. I didn't have, oh, you know, I was didn't have an address or anything. I was just in my van. Hmm. Um, and then lots of straight jobs and, you know, um, so it's just always been kind of a back and forth mix. Okay. Yeah. And how did you connect to the Milwaukee music community when you finally like landed here? Who did you first uh, connect with and play music with? Well, actually, it was um, like a lot of it was Linemans going there and like dipping into that um, uh, open mic there and like uh, well my jug band. We played at Kohansky's a couple times and but uh you know, so there's like folk music circles, like straight folk that I kind of connect with. Like over at the coffee house, I got to know a couple people over there. Um but then through Lineman's, um actually I had a Charlie Parr show and that's when I met uh Chris Porterfield and Nick Berg and oh, sort okay. of got involved in uh Conrad Plymouth and Field Report after that. Uh, and it, you know, ended up hanging out with those guys a lot, and s- spent a lot of time in Damien Striggan's basement <laughs> playing music with those guys. And I still get to do it now with Dry House Ruins. So it's like, it's like I still get to hang out with this dog Pablo, and you know. yes, <laughs> the the infamous Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, did you already have like an arsenal of your own solo stuff, like a pretty? Like back, you know, far back catalog. By that point, you know, were you working on your own stuff still, or were you more eager to collaborate when you first landed here? Um, I, I'm a I'm a real slow grower when it comes to my own music. I I I mean, I'll have bursts, but um, you know, my I I have a couple older solo albums. Um. But the last solo album I'd done, I think it was in 2006, this album, Batteries and Blankets, uh, that I did, I recorded that up in Oshkosh um, at Topsoil Studio up there, which is a whole nother, like, hotbed of just, there's so many wonderful albums got recorded out of there, and there's, that Oshkosh music scene is, like, deep in my heart. Like, I have so many friends up there, and, like, the guys, Redshift Headlights, that were just here like Steve McCabe is a very old friend and collaborator and I've worked with him for years. Um, but it, like, especially getting involved in Conrad Plymouth and the field report, I was really excited to be able to do, I'd been getting into more minimal music and atmospheric stuff. And I discovered sun, which, you know, we talked about when dry house ruins was here and just the idea of playing these chords, um, and allowing them to decay completely. You know, yeah. all the way and in in field report i was able to do that you know in a band setting and and be able to play these big chords and just let them completely go and and decay and and just create these beds and try to push things harmonically and stuff so it was really nice to be able to be supplementing um you know obviously a really amazing songwriter and just bringing textures into you know chris's stuff mm-hmm so do you, uh, would you say you miss like the small town or the rural life at all these days living in, in the city? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my wife and I talk about that all the time. I mean, we're in love with Milwaukee and our neighborhood in particular. We live in the Martin Drive neighborhood and we'll go, we're like old people. I mean, we go and walk around Washington Park or whatever and we have the same conversation every time talking about, oh gosh, we really love our neighborhood and all this stuff, but... I do. I'm. I mean, I miss living in a cabin out in the driftless and yeah, and uh, you know, walking out the back door and you're in the woods. Um, but it it is amazing in Milwaukee. I mean, you can get in the woods really easily here. Yeah, you know, I go over to Riverside Park or down in Wauwatosa Village or 
whatever. There's a million places to squirrel yourself away. Yeah. You go out to Holy Hill or whatever. I have to do that stuff or I go crazy. Mm-hmm. But it's it's pretty easy here. What do you think it is like about the like being brought up in a small town or in a rural area that to like people that are lifelong city people like don't understand? Um, I don't know if they. Well, I yeah, I guess I couldn't say whether they understand <laughs> yeah. it or not. I mean, it, it depends on if you're a neighborhood person. Yeah. You know, if you're a dedicated neighborhood person and you like to live in your little sector and have your haunts and and people get to know you and like the you know the gas station you go to people know who you are and stuff like that then i think you probably kind of get it Mm -hmm. you know it's just it's a little bit of being on an island like when i lived in decorah iowa absolutely as soon as i moved there everybody knew who i was because i was a new guy and and uh you know you're just immersed you're just not you can't opt for anonymity if you want it yeah uh so you have a certain i guess sort of a social responsibility um but the parameters are easier to conceive of like you know living in milwaukee i i just always get this sense of there's so much more than i'll ever digest and it's all changing constantly you know these even just since we moved here there's so many things like acme records didn't exist when we moved here yeah. You know, all these restaurants and, and uh, you know, or like the Arboretum over at um, Riverside Park that the UEC has been doing, that didn't exist. You know, all this stuff that we're constantly watching change. And, and then all the stories, like I, I where I work, I work at the Harley-Davidson Museum and I have lunch with in the maintenance shop and hear all of these stories about these guys that worked in the foundries and, and you know, all these different places and and you just there's just a zillion stories in this town yeah and i never get the sense that i could plumb the depths of it (laughs) you know whereas i think you get the false sense in a small town that you that you've got it yeah you know but it's it's kind of the same you know but that's definitely struck me since i came to town just that depth and churn of milwaukee um and then you think about a city like Chicago or New York or something like it would be impossible to ever get a grasp of I try not more to think than just a neighbor. Like that. I <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. So speaking of stories um, on your record, um, you kind of borrow a story from uh, Trevor Grimm, who was a songwriter who passed away. Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell me a little bit about who Trevor was and why you chose the song of his, the small tractor song, which you had in the last set. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm good friends with Trevor's mom and, uh, I knew Trevor. I mean, he was really young when he passed away and, uh, um, he, well, he, he was such a fantastic songwriter and just a wonderful just fun person I didn't know him so well but just enough to know that I loved his music and I enjoyed every interaction I ever had with him and I and I love his extended family and uh the whole I think this whole EP is really all about like roots and that small town existence and well, and Ben Weaver, too, is uh, who I covered on this, too, is from Rochester um, or has lived in that area. Um, well, and Charlie Parr, too, who collaborated on it, is from Austin, Minnesota, originally. Now he lives in Duluth, but he's from Austin. So this whole thing is this, like, southeastern Minnesota, northeast Iowa conglomeration. And, and um, you know, Trevor's song in particular... Um, I don't know. It's just another spin on it. Like the the whole thing, I think is. I hate to dissect it too much, but the album's about loss and and uh, regret and um, you know maybe nostalgia in a sense and just a sense of home and place. Um, and it's also uh, sort of it's definitely for my father, my late father, and so his passing and my dad's passing in some way are kind of tied together for me. I think. Um, you know, and, uh, 
maybe it's an easier avatar uh, to sing through than singing directly, you know, to, to my dad in a way. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's all, there's a lot of stuff in there for four songs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, speaking of Charlie Parr, you mentioned the Linneman's show. Was that the first time you came into contact with him or had you known him for a long time? No, I, I've known him for years now. Okay. Um, when my wife was living, she was working up at, uh, Lur- or, um, Wolf Ridge Environmental Center up in Northeast Minnesota, uh, when we got together and so she'd go down to Duluth and see Charlie play and she kind of turned me on to his music um, and uh, got me into his album King Earl uh, which is well worth digesting um, and making a part of your collection is like super important to me um, but she got me into his music and then we had a mutual friend in uh, Eric Berry, who someone I lived with in, well, I lived with him twice in Menominee and in um, down in Decorah and played in a ton of bands with. He plays in Trampled by Turtles now. But um, anyway, through this mutual friend, and I like just basically begged Charlie to let me come out and open a show for him in an email, and he was <laughs> nice enough, and he like took me out to play shows with him, and has just been a wonderful friend and like a patron and and has encouraged me endlessly um and he's like he's a good example i think like the way that he conducts himself uh with other musicians and just with people in general like i he's a he's been a really good person to know a good friend cool yeah he seems very thoughtful he's been here before he just seems like you know not a word goes out of his mouth that doesn't mean something. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, real quick before you get up back out there for a second set, I, I'm curious to know about the artist who painted the cover for the EP, um, the Greyhound EP you're releasing. Uh, was it something she worked on with you specifically for the, the EP, or was it something that you saw of hers that you thought would be perfect? That was something that I saw of hers that... Um, I've known Jamie for years too. I know her from Menominee and, and we went to art school together. So, you know, we were, you know, living in each other's shoes, all of us in this building, you know, you'd be there at two o'clock in the morning, whatever, making art. And, and, uh, but as she's gotten into painting and she's gotten into these, uh, landscapes, really skyscapes, you know, horizon with the big sky and, and these, um, sort of rural landscapes and, uh, I had gotten into her paintings just I love them and and as I started making this album there was nothing else I could think of that would uh, go on it and she was nice enough to let me do it so and what's her full name for the audience Jamie Lawler uh, Jamie Lawler Solberg Um, yeah and and, uh, yeah she's a killer painter cool well yeah the whole EP is great storytelling is awesome the the art is as well thank you so all right well we're gonna hear two more songs from it yep um any backstory about the title track greyhound uh greyhound um i guess the the one thing about that uh was that one was written explicitly for my dad um and that one is sort of uh you know i grew up uh christian and i'm an atheist now and i the the whole album is really a friend back in Decorah had prodded me to make an album of spiritual songs or hymns um, because I I do sing them you know it's still an important part of my you know what I do with music but uh, you know it, it was a, I guess it's like a secular secular hymn in a way but it it was uh, it was kind of one of those things where uh, a way of like wishing my dad well on his way you know hmm. yeah awesome all right yeah all right well let's uh have you co- go out there and you're gonna lead off with that track greyhound yep. um jeff mitchell we'll be right Thanks, back guys. with more Thanks. music from him on wmsc's local live in just a moment don't go anywhere at the time cinema 
All right. That's right. Friday Night Freak Show. It was a blast. You are tuned into WMSC's Local Live tonight. Our guest is Jeff Mitchell. Just finished up our chat with him. He is going to uh, play the title track next from his EP that's coming out real soon. Uh, It's called Greyhound. And live from the Bob and Jeannie Freeman Live Performance Studio, we bring you once again Jeff Mitchell. Greyhound is three axles long, axles long, axles long, Greyhound. My home, my home, my home, it's where I'm going. Down and die. 
It's a little bit funny. You know what time it is when you hear that song on Local Live. It's time for This Is Your Song, where we ask our guest to uh, pick something that influences their own work. Today we got Jeff Mitchell in the studio and uh, give us a little background on who you picked and why. Uh, I picked uh, Richard Dawson uh, from his record Peasant. Uh, it's from 2017, and the uh, song's called Ogre. And uh, he's just got uh, just a wonderful uh, emotional feeling in his songs. That's, that's what does it for me with music. Like, if, if I don't connect with it emotionally, it's nothing. Like, I don't care about genres or anything like that. It's just the thing either gets me or it doesn't. Um, and, uh, and his guitar playing is... I mean, it was... A lot, lot more sophisticated than mine, but it's also unhinged, and and really raw sounding, and it's inspiring to hear, you know, someone who is able to take this, like really weird elastic kind of acoustic approach and just turn it into some this really nice little jewel of a song. Uh, so yeah, Richard Dawson. All right, and cool. a recent release at that on vinyl, <laughs> double LP, <laughs> released by Weird World Records. Um, going back to 2017, here is Richard Dawson's Ogre on WMSE. Thank you. 
Thanks again to Club Garibaldi for supporting WMSC's local live program. Tonight our guest was Jeff Mitchell, who picked Richard Dawson's Ogre off of the album Peasant, which was released in 2017 on Weird World Records. That was his This Is Your Song pick. And Jeff's own record, or EP, called Greyhound's coming out real soon. Do you want to give folks a little um, uh, information about sure. all that? Sure, yeah. Um, it was recorded uh, recorded in my basement here in Milwaukee, um, and it's four duets of me and Charlie Parr and uh, a buddy from Duluth, and um, who's just wonderful and well worth checking out all his stuff. And uh, I'm playing a um, release party on uh, October 21st at Lineman's with a special guest. And, uh, yeah, it would be wonderful to see people out there. Awesome. Thanks so much for uh, coming and playing for us and uh, talking with us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, we want to thank everybody for tuning in to tonight's edition of Local Live on WMSE. Local Live is a production of WMSE Radio, recorded and broadcast live from the Bob and Jeannie Friedman Live Performance Studio on the downtown campus of the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Local Live is produced by Aaron and myself and engineered by Billy Cicerelli. Video by Moleskin Productions. Hospitality for Local Live artists provided by Cedar Teeth Pizza, who can be found online at cedarteeth.com. Anodyne Coffee, who can be found online at anodynecoffee.com. And by Sprecher Brewing Company. More information at sprecherbrewery.com. For upcoming guests and archives of past local live performances, visit wmse.org. And tune in again next Tuesday at 6 p.m. for another edition of Local Live with Mrs. Fun. We've been wanting to have them on for a long time. It's going to be a blast. I think so, too. All right, Midnight Radio is up next. Stay tuned to WMSE. Everything you thought it would be. 